I know you've done some research on fasting. Is that in part why fasting has such a positive effect on the body is because it alleviates the need for our immune system to be acting and working in that area? Uh, absolutely. In fact, as simple as it sounds, we actually, in, in, our, uh, in our publication that we put out a couple of years ago, talking about some of the newer research that's coming out in this area, we termed it gut rest. <laughs> the ability of just having, because if you think about it, most people are walking around um, in a fed state for 12, 14, 16 hours a day. Their gastrointestinal tract is constantly, constantly working. Um, you know, of course, all the other associated organs like uh, the liver, the pancreas, they're also working. Um, but for many people, you know, breaking, breaking that habitual intake cycle can be very beneficial. And you're absolutely right to bring up the immune system. There's also certain microbes that may be getting fed that we don't want there. Fasting might be a, a mechanism to maybe reduce those populations and encourage the growth of more healthy bacteria, as well as actually encourage the growth of mucus that surrounds uh, the inner layer um, of our, our, basically our gut barrier. So if you look at, if you look at the gut, you know, you're taking a cross section of the gut. So we have these cells along, along the border called the brush border. And they're very, very important, but it's just one layer of cells and they're interacting with all these microbes that are, you know, kind of in the, in the center of that lumen. So it's very beneficial to have a nice, healthy mucosa, this mucus that surrounds uh, the gut lumen. And if we're constantly not eating the right things or eating too much, it can actually decrease uh, the mucus layer. And that can really be problematic for these microbes to now encroach upon that delicate brush border uh, and really cause some inflammatory issues. So fasting, uh, we're, we're still exploring this area, but it seems to be uh, encouraging um, mu mucus growth, basically. So this brings us again to, I think, a, a forgotten aspect of a lot of nutrition research is we're, we're so hyper-focused on the types of nutrients that we're bringing in, um, the amounts that we're bringing in. We forget about the cadence. We forget about, uh, again, what I was talking about with those exposures. Uh, how often are we consuming something? Are we really paying attention to you know, time in between meals? Uh, when those meals are consumed. And I think this is, uh, I think this is a really untapped area for people to focus attention to, at least in the mainstream, um, on, on, on fasting and, and meal timing. So even there myself, you know, I, I eat, uh, relatively randomly, uh, there, there's really no set schedule for when I'm eating and what I'm eating. I generally, I very rarely eat before noon. Um, and I infrequently eat between noon and four, but, um, beyond that, there's really no set schedule. So this is all educational to me as well in regards to maybe there should be some consideration because like you said, there's a circadian rhythm to our body that we might have that affects sleep. Um, and there is some factor as well not necessarily on circadian rhythm. I'm not sure exactly what you're alluding to in regards to that, but um, that our body recognizes the cyclical patterns that we, that we have. And so that eating food has a pretty big impact uh, or eating at a certain time of day has a pretty big impact. Yeah. So the one thing that we're, we're finding time and time again is the body generally likes routine. The microbes seem to like routine. Um, there's debate over, you know, the best time to, to be eating, uh, you know, the best nutrients, um, like when, when those, um, when those should be consumed. Of course, there's factors that are going to all affect this exercise is a, is a, is a big one or physical activity. Um, but there's many ways, there's many approaches available. There's like, I have listed here, some, um, some adhere to what's called alternate day fasting, where they're fasting completely for one day, uh, another day they're eating, then they're going back into a fast. There's modified fasting regimes. 
Um, there's time restricted feeding. In fact, a really interesting area um, looking at the interactions with these food, these foods as signals and the circadian rhythm is actually cutting off feeding periods earlier in the day where you're actually um, more in a fasted or time restricted eating state later. Uh, even people like um, Brian Johnson, for instance, from um, um, of, of, uh, of social media fame for, for you know, trying to reverse aging, um, say you could slow down aging. I'm not sure about reversing, but he adheres to, um, to that type of eating schedule and uh, is seeing some good benefit, which we find in the literature as well. Uh, of course, there's religious fasting. This is, we, we forget about how food has been viewed for thousands of years. Um, you know, whether it be observing some religious event, um, becoming, trying to become closer to God, um, or even go through periods of, of grievance. This has been really important to most uh, societies throughout history. Now, they likely were not viewing it in terms of, you know, what they're getting, the benefits that they're getting from nutritionally. But the fact that they were doing it likely had some benefit to their health. And we see this still practiced today with, for instance, Ramadan fasting or um, even with other um, Western religions um, like Catholicism with Lent. We still see things like that, uh, that practiced. Now, in terms of the effects that we see in the microbiome, this is still an emerging area. Uh, but as I highlighted earlier in the talk, uh, there actually seems to be this mechanism where, uh, and we see here in the figure there, you see those little, um, those little uh, rectangles, those represent the brush border cells. So these are the cells that are lining, as I said, the um, inner layer of the gastrointestinal tract. And on top of that, or within the lumen, as I said, sits that mucus layer that we wanna encourage the growth of. When we are participating in fasting, um, or we're, we're consuming a diet that's high in polyphenols. So think of, you know, polyphenols, a good example would be the different colors that you get from eating different types of fruit and vegetables, for instance, um, or also um, going through periods of caloric restriction, we see increase in abundance of a, a particular microbe called Acromantia mucinophilia. And basically this microbe is very special um, because it's kind of considered the steward or the keeper of the mucus layer. It resides in the mucus layer. And it's kind of like um, the steward, as I said, in that it's like the, the lawn the, the, the lawn keeper. It, it consumes uh, mucus that uh, is degraded, um, time for it to be recycled, and then it spurs signals um, from the goblet cells that actually produce this mucus to push out more um, um, healthy, um, undegraded mucus. So we get this nice turnover effect. And then this keeps us nice and healthy. It keeps us nice and regular. And it also limits the exposure that we're getting from some potentially pathogenic microbes interacting with the brush border to then signal the immune system that I talked about before of that, um, the galt tissue. Uh, so we can actually, through these different mechanisms, you know, these second and, and third level effects is we can get reductions in overall inflammation in our body. It's a two-day fast that you had there, correct? So is that 48 hours or is that I discontinue eating Monday night and I don't eat again until Thursday morning? So uh, we are actually in the process of publishing work that looked at two full days. So technically it wasn't 48 hours, it would be 64 hours. So um, it was, so say you were coming into a fast, you're going to fast uh, Monday and Tuesday, Sunday, you would stop eating at 8 PM and you wouldn't resume eating again until you came to Wednesday at 8 AM. So I believe that's 64 hours. Um, I'm not too quick on the mental math here at the moment. Um, but yeah, uh, we saw, and we'll be presenting that research soon once that, once that's published, but we saw some very um, remarkable find. We found some very remarkable uh, effects in the microbiome and actually the metabolism, which we were able to profile as well. Mm -hmm.